Sometimes Hollywood just doesn't know what to do with a movie. Hi, friends. Barky Dog here, back with another movie review. Now, I made a pretty bold statement right there because, well, of course, movies are Hollywood's whole business, right? But it's true. Sometimes they have a movie they don't know what to do with. Case in point, Big Trouble in Little China. This became one of the most beloved 80s movies ever made. But before it became one of the most beloved 80s movies ever made, it was a huge flop at the box office. See, the studio saw this thing and didn't know what to make of it. Was it a comedy? A horror movie? An action movie? Kung Fu? They couldn't figure it out. So they marketed it all wrong, and the picture never found its audience. It was only later that Big Trouble in Little China became the 80s classic we all know it to be. The same thing happened with this movie. This time we're talking about The Late Show from 1977. That year everyone was watching some other picture. <laughs> but The Late Show was so different from the usual fare, the studio didn't know what to do with it. The result was some criminally tepid marketing that did nothing to help ticket sales. And the movie never found its audience. At least, not at the time. They called it by turns a comedy, a drama, a mystery story, a crime picture, a poignant and touching romantic type thing, but none of those alone really capture what the movie is. It's not really a comedy, but it has comedic elements and two comedic leading stars. It really is a combination of all of those things, but if I had to quantify it, I'd say it's more of a dramedy, a term that didn't exist at the time, but with the emphasis on drama. The Late Show is one of the early entries in the neo-noir genre. Robert Altman, who produced The Late Show, previously offered The Long Goodbye, and in 1974, there was Chinatown, which really launched this genre, a return to the themes and archetypes of film noir, but made with then-modern sensibilities. The story begins with our hero, Ira Wells, a semi-retired private eye, relaxing at home one night when his old partner comes calling. Shot full of lead! His old friend dies before he can explain what happened. Wells vows to find the killer and bring him to justice. Yeah, because when your partner is killed, you're supposed to do something about it. <laughs> Soon, a mutual friend introduces Wells to a new client, a spaced-out ex-hippie New Age type named Margot Sterling. Her case? Her ex-boyfriend has kidnapped her pet cat. Wells, naturally, isn't interested. It's a cat. I wouldn't be interested either. But it turns out the murder case is tied up with the cat kidnapper, so Wells takes the case. Wells is not in his prime. He has a bad leg and an ulcer. Plus, he's well over 50. And he's a cynic. He's seen it all. Pushers, floozies, small-time crooks, and all the rest. And as the movie unfolds, he and Margot interact more, and we see Wells begin to open up and start caring again. The two complement each other in a way they didn't know they needed. It's not romantic, exactly. It's 
a real friendship that's developing. As the investigation continues, Wells and Margot navigate the convoluted twists and turns endemic to a film noir private eye case. Art Carney plays Wells in what amounts to a dramatic role with some comedic overtones, and he's brilliant. And the movie's title really fits the state we find Wells in, the late show being the last show, the last act before the venue closes. And Lily Tomlin is really good as Margot, again, a comedic role but with dramatic elements, and she delivers. Both are surprisingly wonderful and push the boundaries of what they were known for. Eugene Roche, who we saw in They Might Be Giants, is here as a criminal type. We also see Bill Macy, Walter from Maud. God'll get you for that, would ya? <laughs> <laughs> he plays a washed-up agent here. Joanna Cassidy is a femme fatale type suspect. John Considine plays a henchman. And sharp-eyed viewers will spot this photograph on Wells' desk. That's a picture of Martha Vickers, who played Carmen Sternwood in The Big Sleep. And Regan, the dead partner, that's the name of the missing man from The Big Sleep. The movie has a reality shot in and around real locations. Carney also brings a reality. A semi-retired man not longing for the past, but tied to it. The friend who's washed up and will only ever be small time. The crook not big enough for the big time. It's all wonderfully realized here. In the end, the movie was a sleeper and raked in a respectable 2.9 million at the box office. Critics, including Pauline Kael and both Gene Siskel and Robert Ebert, among others, almost universally praised the effort. There were some Oscar nominations and minor awards, but the movie was up against Star Wars, Kramer vs. Kramer and Annie Hall. The Late Show lost out, and while a sequel was proposed, Warner's criminally half-hearted and negligent promotion of The Late Show killed the movie's momentum and ultimately nixed the idea of a sequel. The story of The Late Show didn't end with the film, no. In 1985, there was a short live TV series called Eye to Eye, loosely based on the movie. Charles Durning played the older Private Eye. Stephanie Farsi was his younger female partner. It only ran six episodes. The Late Show is still one of those movies from 1977 that isn't Star Wars, which movie fans still talk about fondly anyway. It's that good. If you only know him as Ed Norton from The Honeymooners, Carney is a revelation in this role. He owns it completely and does a damn fine job bringing the character of Ira Wells to life. Tomlin is also good as the kooky, washed up hippie clinging to her flower child past. Together, they make a peanut butter and jelly pairing you don't want to miss. I'm giving this one three paws up. The Late Show is a fine example from the dawn of the neo-noir genre. The Late Show is old school leavened with the then new school. It has some fine characterizations from a talented cast. It takes its time and it delivers. We need more films like The Late Show today. If only it could be so. Definitely a movie you should see. The Late Show is available on VHS, DVD, and digitally from Amazon Prime. You can watch another of my reviews here. 
And down here, you can watch uh, more movie reviews of movies from the 1970s. You take care of yourselves, and I'll see you in the next one.